Hey folks, it is July 67th, 2469, back here at Boardwalk Hall. And um, there was a video I did a while back where I did the signal flow of the uh, original uh, wiring system of the Midmer Losh, and I came in here to the switching room and a couple people commented, say, has there ever been a video about that? And I said, no, I didn't think there was enough to warrant a video about that. But on further reflection and looking around somewhere, I think it is. So. Uh, I'm going to do a tour of what I consider to be Grand Central Station of the uh, wiring of this thing. So I'm in the, um, the great side, that is to say the right chamber switching room, switch and relay room. And I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and do uh, a walk around and then I'm gonna put it back on the tripod and uh, show something kind of interesting about this room. So this is the view if you were coming up from the organ shop and I'm going to turn around and show the stairwell down there. That's the door to the organ shop and then to the right is the stairwell leading to the stage, etc. This new camera gives me a warning if I'm panning too fast, so it <laughs> always reminds me, pan slower. So anyway, you, you come in here and Part of the wind system for the grate and pedal section is in this room. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six wind regulators going to the solo, crate, and pedal side of the organ. And if you come this way and make the turn to the right here, you end up in the great division, which is out there. And you've seen that before if you've ever taken the tour. And this pipe to the right here is low C of the Contra Tibia Clause 32. Now, one thing I got clarified before I made this video is that I mentioned solid state and Opus 2 and all that. So up there, you can see the, the red lights glowing on the Opus 2 system. The Opus 2 on this side of the organ, as Nathan told me, is basically just acting as the cable between the console and this room. But all of the circuitry and all of the original mechanical switches, etc., are all still in operation. So everything you see is still working and is in the system. And if the wind was cut off to this room, the organ, the right side wouldn't play. So you've seen some of this before. You have rows and rows and rows of switch stacks. This is the back side of the other side. And then this is what the fronts of all the switches look like. And it controls all of the unit stops. All of these switch stacks anyway, operate all of the unit stops on this side of the organ. Just walls and walls and walls of switchings, switch switches. And I'll find one with some good light here and we'll analyze it. Okay, here's one. So you see that these switches are all ganged up and for those of you in the organ business, this will look very familiar as uh, you know, gang switches go. So if we look up here, we have solo two foot Geigen 15th, great two foot Geigen 15th, octave principle solo four, octave principle, Geigen principle, Geigen principle, Geigen principle, contra Geigen, etc., etc., etc. Geigen 16 foot principle. So all of that switching, I'll back up here. This switch, this one, 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 and this one. 
all control the unification of one rank of pipes. And so you have this, and then you have another unit rank here, and all of those switches all control one rank, which go to the bus bars here. And interesting, the bus bars only go to this point, and then as they carry on further through, they work their way up and up and up where they're not needed, and then down as they're not needed, and so on, which is kind of an interesting arrangement. So all of these switch stacks are for unit stops. There's no need for switching on straight stops because it just goes straight to a uh, stop action and then the primary operates the... the uh, I lost my train right there. You don't need switch stacks for straight stops. So all of, all of these switches are for all the unit stops. In this case, it's the doppel flute, the doppel twelfth, Doppel flute, something else, solo doppel flute, great doppel flute, solo, pedal, and so on. So in total, you have, let me turn around here, one, two, three, four assemblies of switches for unit stops. each one with dozens and dozens and dozens of switches. And of course, these are all driven by the famous keying room over here. And many of you have seen this before. This is the keying room, which because the organ's not on, I can open them up into. And of course, all of, all of this mechanism is still operating. It's just that the Opus 2 is driving these magnets, which then make contact and go to the switches and all that kind of stuff. So we've all seen this. Famous pictures from the Hess collection. But there's one thing I'd like you to notice. This, oh, hi Chuck. That's Chuck Gibson out there. Say hi to everybody. Hello. Guest star. <laughs> Just passing through. This, this little wire dangling right here. What's that? Well, typical engineering for something I never thought of and it just occurred to me later. What happens if you're working this thing? You have to get out. That's what that's for. And now I'm going to reset the camera and show you what I think is the most clever, <laughs> the most clever thing in this relay room. So here's a question for you. You saw those reservoirs that are back there. I'm on, I'm on top of one of these switch stacks. What regulates the wind for all this switching equipment? And where does that come from? Well, here's the answer, and I think this is really fun. So you can see right here, this is a regulator. This is a mid merlosh regulator, a fairly small one. And we have three curtain valves. One, two, three, right here. Each one of those curtain valves is an intake, uh, if you will, for each of the three blowers on this side of the organ. So you have one from great high pressure, one from great low pressure, and this one that's in the middle here that's disconnected is from the echo blower. So any of the three blowers on the right side will run the relay room. And inside each of these boxes is a check valve so that if you have one blower on but not the other ones, nothing will feed back anywhere else, right? Which is fine. I mean, that really makes sense. And this curtain valve here has a wind line that's going that direction out there. This one has a wind line that's going that direction. And this one, this wind line here is going all the way across the ceiling of the chamber and into a wall where it then disappears into who knows where and goes all the way into the sub basement to the echo blower, which is going to be restored later this year. So that's all fine and dandy. But what about the question of what I showed there in the in the keying room? What if you have to get out and you're inside? Well, Midmer Losh thought of that 
And what they provided is this little trough right here. You see this? Has a chain connected to the other end. It goes down a pulley to that wire that I showed you in the keying room and it comes all the way up here to this linkage around these pulleys and here. You pull on the, um, the cord, that wire inside the keying room and it will raise the curtain valves and cut the wind off so you can get out. And then when you get out the other side, you can come over here and release it. It may do it on its own uh, via gravity and turn everything back on so that you can control the wind to the keying room from inside the keying room. So nobody needs to get trapped in there. Because I thought of that myself. It's like, well, what do you do? I mean, there's no walkie talkies. There's no cell phones. I mean, that's horribly dangerous to possibly be locked in there. But no, they provided a way to cut off the wind in there with this whole elaborate trough and pulley system to these curtain valves. So I think that's kind of fun. Now, uh, that's pretty much all there is here in, in this room. I'm going to wrap it up outside in the auditorium. Nick is doing some tuning. I'm outside the left main chamber. And that spot, I'm going to use this laser pointer. Oops, wrong end. Let's see. The original relay room for the left side was approximately there. I don't know if you can see that laser point. It's blue, it's not very good, but it was right in that area underneath the seats. And we can prove this by going in the chamber and you can see what's on the other side of the wall. the door that led to the relay room for the left main chamber. Of course, I'm next to the famous big diapasons here on the right. But that's where it went before the renovations. Going back out to the auditorium. Oops. If you can imagine taking all that equipment, the same size as what was in the Great Division, and rebuilding it and finding a room for it, and rewiring all that cotton-covered wire, which you can't use again, it's pretty easy to see why putting the left side relay room back would have been practically impossible. I mean, I guess if somebody wanted to donate a few million dollars, you could do it, but not realistic. And that's why we got Opus 2 running it now. So there you go with the sound of a string from the left side tickling our ears, I'll sign off.